Welcome to Boarding School 360 webinar series. We are so glad to have you all joining us this evening. I'm Katie Garrett, and as part of Garrett Educational Consulting, we have launched Boarding School 360 to serve as a resource for students and their families to learn more about boarding schools, as well as specific schools. Tonight is the third in our series of webinars to educate families on the boarding school process, especially as it relates to COVID. Um, tonight, our topic will be crafting your essays and what are schools looking for. And joining us on the panel discussion, we have Patrick Miller from Avon Old Farm School, Sean Atkins from Suffield Academy, and Ken LeBate from Foxcroft School. So I'm going to let each of them introduce themselves and give an overview of their schools as they um, are very um, specific in, in the clientele that they serve. So I'm going to let Patrick start. Um, from Avon. Thank you, Katie. Um, as Katie mentioned, my name is Patrick Miller. I'm actually a graduate of Avon Old Farms. I graduated in the class of 2007. Um, I'm actually one of 18 alumnus who work for the school now, so uh, we certainly love it. Um, we're located in Avon, Connecticut, which is about 20, 25 minutes from the capital of Hartford, about two hours to New York City, two hours to Boston. Uh, we have 405 students in the school, um, and just kind of a, a general overview of what we're all about. Say, you know, a traditional boarding school, you'll see our students wearing shirt ties and jackets on campus. Um, but I think the, the thing that we stress the most is just a balanced uh, school. You know, we've got a strong athletic program, music program, arts, um, and we've got every type, every type of student you can think of um, from 18 AP courses uh, to that emerging scholar. So it's a pretty well balanced campus. Great. Thank you. Sean. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sean Atkins. I'm Director of Admission and Financial Aid at Suffield Academy, and we are located in Suffield, Connecticut, which is about 20 minutes from Avon. Uh, we're a co-ed school. Uh, we're also very close to an airport, so that's a little plug for Avon and Suffield, this direct flight uh, from Charlotte to, to Bradley Airport. Uh, the big thing for me uh, when I think about Suffield, we have 410 kids from 28 countries and 27 states. Uh, we're 70% boarding and 30% day. Uh, and, and similar to my colleagues, I bet we're looking for happy, engaged students who have a high level of intellectual curiosity. And I think more importantly, who want to be at boarding school, uh, especially uh, during the time um, th that we're in right now. I've been, been happy with how excited our kids are just to be back on campus and, and, and see faculty and see their friends. So I think that's key. Uh, we, we have a, a strong academic program as well and athletic program, just like my, my colleagues on the call. But one thing that stands out to me is just happiness, right? We just want kids to, ha to be happy uh, and to be at a place where we can help you reach the apex of where you want to be in a variety of different ways. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. All right, Ken, you're up. Okay, thank you so much, Katie. I'm Ken LeBate, Director of Admission and Enrollment at Foxcroft School. And uh, I really do feel like I am so lucky to work for Foxcroft. Uh, we are an independent all girls boarding school that serves nine through 12 and a postgraduate year. We're located in beautiful Middleburg, Virginia. That's in the heart of horse country and uh, about an hour and change from DC. To plug our airport, we're about 35 minutes from Dulles. So the gateway to the world, not too far away. And uh, really, there are so many things that make this such a amazing transformational experience for our girls. Um, first, I'd say that it's a safe environment for self-exploration. Our mission is to serve, uh, or rather to help every girl explore her unique voice. And through this transformational experience, we're committed to delivering on a set of promises uh, that every girl should expect from this experience, be it the uh, unique learning experiences in and out of the classroom. It's a residential community of understanding hearts, um, an uncommonly beautiful setting in which to learn, grow, and thrive. And uh, our core promise is a lifetime of friendship and global connections. I think um, beyond that, you could also say that this is characterized uh, really by academic excellence. Foxcroft is a national leader in girls STEM. Uh, we offer concentrations for our girls with STEM, animal science, uh, global studies, fine arts. And of course, we have a long history and deep love for equestrian pursuits. So 
with all of that, it's just a wonderful experience for girls that are looking to uh, find a supportive environment to be themselves and have a really fun educational journey. Great, thank you so much, Ken. Um, and I so appreciate the three of you um, joining me tonight. I know that this is a very busy time of year for y'all. Um, and so I really appreciate your willingness to share your expertise and to share with um, boarding school applicants and their families about the essay process and what you guys are looking for um, as you're reading through essays. So I thought it would be helpful to kind of talk through um, and let the participants know about the different types of application portals that there are because obviously the essays are going to vary in relation to those. Um, so I would say there are three basic types of um, application platforms. There's the standard application online, um, which is part of the SSAT. Um, there is the gateway to prep platform, and then there are school specific platforms. So the standard application online um, is an application that, that uh, some independent like K through 12 schools use as well as boarding schools. Um, students can apply to hundreds of schools using the standard application online. They have um, a collective group of essays and parent state student essays and parent statements that um, are more about the independent school or boarding school um, process and not school specific. So you answer those questions and they go to all the schools to which you apply to. Um, the Gateway platform um, is a little bit different. They do have some general um, biographical information that um, you just have to complete once and it goes to all the schools, but most of the schools on Gateway have their own school specific essays. So it will require students to, to complete um, more than one set of essays. Um, and then school specific um, application platforms, you know, if, if students are applying to just one or two schools, they may decide to do the school specific application. Um, and then in addition to that, some schools only have a school specific application. They are not part of the standard application online or the gateway to prep um, platform. So um, depending on, you know, the school list to which you're applying, I, I strongly recommend kind of researching ahead of time what um, application platform each of the schools are on so that you can prepare in advance um, and, and dedicate the time that you will need to, to answer, um, you know, the essay questions and the parent statements thoroughly. Um, so all three of these schools that um, are on the panel tonight are actually part of the standard application online. So I thought it would be helpful to, to talk through those specific essays. Um, clearly they, they, the answers that these experts will um, give will, will relate to some of the you know, school specific essays on Gateway, um, but I thought it would be helpful to go through the, the student essays and then the parent statements and, and get their insight on what types of information they are looking for um, as they um, read the essays and the applications. Um, so I'm gonna go through each of the questions and I'm gonna have each one of them um, you know, give their insight as to what they're looking for. So the first question um, to start, there are three short student essays um, and then one longer essay. So the three um, short essays are all required. The one longer essay, you have a choice of five that you get to choose from, that a student gets to choose from. So, um, so for the first required question, um, we're gonna have Sean weigh in on this. And so aside from books or articles assigned for school, what books, articles, podcasts, or documentaries have you enjoyed in the past year and why? So Sean, if you could give us a little insight on um, maybe why that question's being asked and also what you guys are looking for um, when you're reading through that, the answer to that question. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Um, definitely happy to talk to everybody tonight. I think the big thing for me is, you know, we read a ton of applications, right? Um, and, and it's different at every school in, in terms of how they allocate it. I like to, to try to read every 
every application. So there's always a couple of books that stand out, right? You see the same books from most eighth graders and, and ninth graders, just depending on where they are. I would, you don't know what those books are per se, but we do, right? So I would try to stay away from the traditional books that everybody's reading. Um, because for me, when I think about reading an application, I'm trying to figure out what separates you from everyone else. So um, just think about a book or, or a podcast or a documentary that really means something to you. Like, how are you going to convey how you feel in a very concise way? Because 250 words is not, it's not a ton of words. So I, I think, try to, I wouldn't say think outside the box, but think definitely not what books you're reading in school. Think about things that you've been exposed to outside of the classroom and things that, that you feel like are, gonna, are making an impact on your life. I feel when you're writing about things that mean something to, to you, we get that organic and genuine feel. Um, and, you know, as to why we asked, the, you know, SAO asked the, those questions, I think, because it's pertinent to what's important usually and what's happening in the world. Uh, and I guess the other thing is don't fall prey to what you think we want to hear, right? Uh, think about, be selfish. Think about you and how you want to convey that message when, when, you're, you, when you're talking about a book, article, podcast, or, or whatever it may be. Thanks. Hope that helps. Thank you. That was great. Um, and I think that's an important point too, is to, um, I often have students ask like, well, you know, I read this book, but it, it's not like, you know, a historical book or, you know, it wasn't this, you know, profound, you know, Shakespearean novel, but I, I loved it because of this. And I'm like, that's, that's a perfect book to talk about because it speaks to, you know, either your interest or um, an experience you've had or those types of things. Um, you know, or even if I have kids that talk about, um, you know, a podcast and they're, they're embarrassed. They're like, well, I really love this podcast, you know, about science and all these experiments or rockets or airplanes. And I'm like, that's what they want to hear. They want to hear who you really are. There's not, they're not looking for some, you know, magic answer. They're, they're really getting, you know, wanting to have an opportunity to, to learn who you are further. So I think that's, that's very good advice to, to not answer what they think you want to hear, but to answer what they really want to say. So thank you, Sean. Okay, Ken, um, the next short answer question that um, requires a 200 to 250 word um, response is describe either an academic or extracurricular achievement or a challenge that had a meaningful impact on you. What did it take to accomplish the achievement or overcome um, the challenge and what did you learn from that experience? Okay, so as an admissions person, uh, sifting through the responses to a question like that, the hope is, you know, maybe you get a sense of one's resilience. Um, we believe in the growth mindset here at Foxcroft. And if you're not familiar with that, I've got some homework for everybody on the webinar. Check out the uh, TED Talk podcast. It's 10 minutes of your time on the growth mindset, but well worth those 10 minutes. Essentially what that means uh, if you embrace this mindset is you are uh, going to face these challenges, but through facing these challenges, you'll realize that these are opportunities uh, to gain experience and to grow and to understand oneself better. Um, and that's something that we think is pretty important here at Foxcroft. So uh, with a question like that, maybe you get a sense of one's grit or resilience. You know, grit is one of those key words that when you're working on the college essays, you might want to come back to. But uh, as far as um, us, you know, it's also about fit. And I think fit is a very important factor, regardless of what question is being responded to. So we will look at a student with the idea of evaluating, are we a good fit for this kid? Or will they be a good fit for our community? So these are all uh, things that run through my mind uh, as a member of the admissions committee here at Foxcroft. So I guess I would I, I follow up with a question to that. Are there um, any topics that you would have kids avoid when they're talking about challenges or overcoming challenges? Well, I think it's important to be honest and to be oneself, I suppose. Um, there's also these rules out there, like don't share things that you wouldn't want your grandmother to know. 
maybe I, I don't know if I'm <laughs> encouraging people to uh, avoid transparency by saying that, but uh, you, you should try to put your best foot forward while doing so honestly. I hope that's a good way of putting it. Very well put. Um, thank you for that. Um, okay, third question, short answer question. Um, each person has unique characteristics that define who they are. Choose three words that just best describe you as a person and explain how they represent you. So Patrick. Well, it's, it's similar to what Mr. Atkins said in his first answer. Um, we, we sometimes see the same words pop up over and over again. So take your time with this, Re really think about it. Um, and, and something I want you to think about is that, you know, let's just say for instance, I was the one to interview you uh, during the interview process. There's five other members of our admission committee that will read your file um, at some point during the winter. So um, they don't know you. I'm going to speak on your behalf when we get into our mission committee, but those essays are really a chance for you to say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I want you to know about me. So um, and I believe Mr. LeBate said as well, brag, let us know who you are. Um, be specific about what's important to you and what you want to get across through those essays. So um, take your time with that. Uh, definitely think it through. Don't go with what you think you want us to know or what you think you we want to hear. Uh, really take some time and then give sound examples. I mean, I think that's the best thing you can do is um, give us an instance. You know, this happened to me in second grade and, and this is why I have determination and um, kind of feed us that story. And I know it's only 200, 250 words, but uh, try to get that across with a, a, a subtle example uh, that will really resonate with us. Um, so take your time, um, think it through and, and really think about what you want to get across to the rest of the committee members who will be reading your file. Thanks, Patrick. Um, <clears throat> and I would say, I would add to that just, you know, having working with students on this side of the desk um, and having them, you know, contemplate you know, what words do describe me? I think a lot of times, even, you know, not just eighth and ninth graders have a, a hard time using, you know, putting descriptions on themselves. But I think even, you know, some of my kids that are applying to college when they have a, a similar question, um, stumble on that same essay question. And so a lot of times I'll say, you know, ask your friends how they would describe you, you know, or your parents. Um, you know, I've even gone so far as to have some of my students do, um, you know, a Myers-Briggs personality test. If they really can't, you know, think through, um, you know, some, some of their qualities and characteristics or strength finders. And so I think there's some ways, even though if kids have a hard time, the students have a hard time, um, you know, labeling themselves as such, that you know, they, there's outside sources that can help them with that, whether it's their friends or parents or teachers, um, or like I said, you know, like a, a Myers Briggs or a, a Strength Finders as well. So, um, oftentimes those people sometimes know, know the students better than they think they know themselves. So, that um, that is great advice. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so after the three. 200 to 250 word essays that we just discussed. There is a long student essay. Um, it is 250 to 500 words. Um, and there are, I believe five, five prompts um, from which the students can choose. They just have to choose one and answer one of them. And so the topics vary. They include you know, an impactful event or experience you've had a decision you've regretted, um, the best piece of advice you've received, um, a moment when you felt left out. And the last one is a favorite quote from a book, movie, or song lyric. Um, so I thought it might be helpful um, to, to have um, the panelists sort of talk through how do you go about selecting um, a question to respond to and how should you go about answering it? Like, what are the important components to get across? So Sean, can you start with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, I come, I come at this from a unique perspective. My son applied to boarding, junior boarding schools last year uh, and used the SAO. So I was trying not to watch him like a hawk throughout, throughout the process, um, which is hard. So parents, I, I totally understand, but I learned a lot about just looking at it to Katie's point from, from, a, from a different perspective, I think the most important thing you could do is not try to pick one question. 
pick two and answer both of those questions and then really reflect whether if you have, you're fortunate to have a consultant, work with your consultant, your parent, your friend, you know, look at two, two of those prompts. It's, it's good practice to write essays and then think which one do you feel you've answered the question the best possible way. Um, I don't think there's a best, uh, a best question out of the five. I think it really pertains to you. Um, but I think you have to be thoughtful. Uh, I think you have to take your time and don't rush. Uh, on a separate note, I would be careful with writing schools names in that uh, prompt. Sometimes kids will put, you know, another school's name in there just because that's the first one you did. And, and you know, you, you're applying to 10 different schools. That personally fi gets me fired up sometimes because that, that means that the people looking over it didn't pay enough attention to uh, the essay, well, we rarely use it against you. I can't say that um, it's helpful. Um, so think about that and, and look at, especially when you're applying to multiple schools, I don't think it's important to, to mention any school in your essays. Uh, but I, I, again, I, I think being thoughtful about why you're selecting it and what are the reasons why you're selecting it and hopefully being able to get those things across. So just to wrap things up, pick two, maybe three if you want, um, take your time, be thoughtful, and use the people around you um, that you can trust, maybe a sibling, somebody that you really feel knows you well, and that can be critical of you um, in regard to reading that essay, I, I think can be helpful to you, and I think it would help you get to that one uh, prompt that you feel makes sense. Last thing, even though I don't want 520 words, I don't want 240 words. Uh, you know, I, I think use this opportunity to, to use that 250 to 500 words to get your point across. Thanks. Thank you. That was going to be one of my follow up questions to y'all was, you know, 250 to 500 words can be a big difference for some of these kids um, who maybe struggle to put their thoughts on paper. Um, and so I was going to ask you all if you, you know, are you looking for the essays to be closer to 500 words? If a student has 250 words, do you look at it um, like not as thoroughly because you you think like, oh, they didn't spend as much time on it because they only put 250 words into it. Do you guys have thoughts on that? I, I would say um, we're looking for substance. You know, so if it's only 250 words, but it's really good, that's that's fine. Um, you know, that that's the biggest thing. You can tell how much time went into it just by the, the message that got across. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, maybe not the strongest writer at the time, but if you can really kind of collect your thoughts and you've got plenty of time to get this done with, um, take a couple of weekends to work it over. Um, if, if the substance is there, you should be fine. So I, I wouldn't get too hung up on it, but you know. As Mr. Atkins said, we read a lot of files and it's pretty evident who took the time to say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this right. I'm gonna put my best self forward. Um, all those are great questions. So like, you can't go wrong with which one you choose. Um, just make sure, and I like what he said, you know, have a sister read it, have a brother read it. You know, is this really coming across as who I am? Um, I think that's important because we, we really do truly pick up on, on, on just personality traits and character just by reading an essay, as, as weird as that sounds. So. Um, that, that'd be my only input. Thank you. Uh, to just finish up, I guess, regarding that, I don't uh, count the words, but yes, very much like Mr. Miller, it's going to be about the substance. We certainly won't punish a, a student for being efficient with their words. Um, and I think, you know, maybe culturally, depending on where you're from, uh, that could be a trait that could be valued. I, I understand that the Spartans of ancient Greece were known for their laconic way, right? The, the paucity of words and answering a question. So uh, <laughs> we just want the substance, really. That's what we'll focus on. And if you're efficient in how you use those words, but you adhere to those parameters, awesome. Great, thank you. And I was gonna ask um, Patrick and Ken, since you both are um, from single gender schools, if there are um, certain things that you, or expectations or certain things that you are looking for um, coming from a single gender school, are there topics that um, you want to hear more about or less about depending on um, your applicant pool. 
I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I, I would just say, as you go through the essays and into the application, um, diversify. I've, I've read some applications that are all about sports and it's like, mm, you're missing the point here. Like, I, I know you love hockey, I get that. I wanna know more. So I, I would say, if you read through your essays and every single one of them touches on hockey, you missed the point. We, we got that, we, we saw that in the activities, we probably interviewed you, it's probably come across there. Um, I, I would certainly stress that you find something else that you, you really are passionate about or a hobby or an interest or um, like Mr. LeBate said, you know, what you wouldn't tell your grandmother, what, what are those kind of interesting stories you like to juggle or make comic books? I wanna know about that. Let, let's diversify the application as, as much as you can without, I don't want you to lie or, or um, you know, kind of ad lib, but I, I would like to know more than just your, your single focus, who, who else are you? And, and I'm gonna stress that in the interview as well. I'm gonna tell you, hey, you might think this is all you're about, but guess what? There's so much more. And I think you'll learn about that at, at any one of these boarding schools, uh, but try to do that in the essays as well. So uh, coming from the perspective, I guess, of the girls school, very much, very similar to Avon Old Farm School and uh, what Mr. Miller said, uh, you know, I guess the, it really comes down to fit. <laughs> we want to talk about fit uh, when it comes to admissions evaluation because that is the central theme uh, and the essay is a way to help to assess that. So from a girls school, uh, what's, what are some characteristics that perhaps we're thinking about for fit? Well, we, um, I, I think an open mind is certainly important. There are so many different ways, uh, pathways actually through the Foxcroft experience. So one girl's experience academically, socially, uh, through co-curriculars, it could be completely different than another student's experience. But with an open mind, you can take advantage of what Foxcroft has to offer. And um, that's not to say that everybody has to be totally all gung-ho for everything that comes their way, but be willing to explore and embrace new perspectives. Uh, have a spirit of adventure, perhaps. Uh, that's something that we like to see because, well, we have 500 acres. There's a lot of uh, trails that you could get adventurous with. So, you know, might as well come equip the campus with that. I think, you know, it all really boils down to fit. And there are so many ways that you can fit here uh, that it's probably not all that difficult to express that. But um, again, that is something that we will be considering as we read your essay here at Foxcroft. Thank you, Ken. Um, I think those are all, that's all great advice, um, and and I think the making sure you diversify your essays is is also great advice too. Um, oftentimes, kids will do these essays in isolation. You know, they'll do the first one, and then you know maybe a week later they'll do the second one. And so I always do make them read because I said, you know, when, when admissions are reading your application, they're reading it all together. So, you know, making sure that the kids read through it as, it, as one and, and at the end of it say, okay, so what do you think that school would say about you? You know, would they, would they have a good idea of what your personality is? What's important to you, your interests, you know, your academics. And so making sure that the, the essays that they choose to write touch on a lot of different parts of who they are. Um, and, I, and I always say this, that the beauty of boarding school is that there are so many roles to fill and you're expected to fill a lot of them, you know, so, you know, you don't want your application to read that you are just a hockey player. And that is all you're going to do because besides being a hockey player you might also need to be a math tutor and a dorm prefect and you know uh you know have a role in the musical and you know be an ambassador or a tour guide as well so um to really you know kind of lay out all the pieces that make you unique um and and, do, and through the essays i think that's a great way to do that and really diversify your your char characteristics so we are going to move to the parent statement portion of the SAO. Um, and so within that, there are two questions that parents need to answer um, of 200 to 250 words. And then there are several optional statements that may or may not be applicable to your students. So we will talk through those as well. 
So Patrick, I'm going to have you address um, the first question, which is, um, what are your hopes for your child in their secondary school experience? Um, I, you'd be surprised, but we, we really do take the parent essays uh, very seriously. And, and, and to be honest with you, it's a lot of what Mr. Levate has said as well is it, it's about fit. And we want to make sure that expectations across the board are uh, are mutual. Like, is this a good fit for us? Is this the, the family um, understand what our school, you know, values and what we think we can do for their child? Um, and is that in line with what the parents think as well? So those those parents' statements are very helpful for us. Um, not from a, not only from a mission staff point, but um, as the file goes through our office, and if we end up accepting you and you enroll in the school, that file then goes to our academic deans and our associate head of school. So there's a lot of people who read this file, um, and that's a great place where actually the dean of students and the associate head get together and say, who's a good advisor fit? You know, who, who's a um, you know academically you know what are they telling us in this essay that we think could be helpful as we start planning for teachers and, and, and you know, honor rolls, honor roll courses or regular courses. Um, so we really do extract a lot of information from all the essays, but especially from the parent essays, because um, of course, you know, your, your son or daughter, the, the best, um, you know, the ins and outs, we, we're, we're soaking up all that data um, and it helps us to make sure that their transition to the school is really smooth with the appropriate fit as far as a dorm, a, an advisor, even an academic dean. So. Um, no, I, we've, we really do value those. And I would say, please be honest, please let us know. And, and it helps us have a more um, open conversation about, hey, you said this in the essay, I just wanna connect, is this clear? Uh, we'll reach out, we'll have those conversations prior to, to an acceptance, just because uh, we wanna make sure it's the right fit. I mean, we're an all boys school. It's not for everyone, but there are those who say, this is a great fit and let's talk about why. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Mr. LeBate has those conversations all the time, and even Mr. Atkins as well. Um, th those parent essays can really um, help us kind of find and fine tune our, our decisions and okay, yeah, they, they get what they're getting into and they, they get our school. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so the, the second um, required parent statement is describe an experience that posed a significant challenge for your child. How did your child respond to that challenge? So again, that's a 200 to 250 word response. So Ken, what are your thoughts on that specific question? So uh, really to add to what Mr. Miller has said, because I think it's a very similar mindset once again, um, you know, what we want to ensure is that there's an understanding that we are partnering with the parents and the family uh, to support the students' experience here at Foxcroft. So it's not just, you're gonna drop the student off, see you later, we'll pick you up come Christmas and uh, good luck. It's not like that at all. We are very much working collaboratively with the families and uh, with the student for that, that shared goal. And uh, by understanding how you may have supported your student through a particular challenge, that's incredibly insightful for the admissions committee because if we feel that there are certain recommendations that might be beneficial for a student to uh, have as a part of this experience, whatever that might be, we want to ensure that there's at least a chance to have a conversation about that and perhaps also the support to make sure that this student gets uh, that properly vetted, whatever the outcome may be. So it's a partnership. And regardless of what the challenge the student may have faced, the parents also had a role at some point, presumably, and we want to make sure that uh, we all work together uh, for the best interests of our kids. Great, thank you, Ken. Um, so the other questions, parent statement questions, um, are um, optional. I guess if they're, I mean, if they're applicable, you should answer them. Um, so one is, has your child been? subject to disciplinary action by school, including but not limited to withdraw from school, probation, or suspension? If you answer yes, please add details in 100 to 200 words. So Sean, I'm wondering if you could talk to that. I know that that's a touchy subject for a lot of parents and a lot of parents try to work around it. Um, so maybe if you could, um, if you could talk about, you know, how parents should answer that question and um, how much detail they should give 
if needed? Yeah, I, I mean, this this one's tough, right? I, I look at it from, and I'm, I look at it from the perspective of more than likely, if your child has been suspended or uh, has have has had to withdraw, it's going to be in their transcript, right? There's going to be some information that we're going to see. So I look at this as a partnership and I'm sure both Ken and Patrick would agree. Things happen, right? I, I mean, uh, obviously I think it depends at what point in your middle school career or your high school career that you've, you've went through these things, but be honest. Um, the, the last thing we want is to uh, really fall in love with a kid, fall in love with a family. And then we get information that really uh, changes our perspective. And I think with you not being able to tell your story, there's a strong chance that we won't even follow up because we feel that that trust is broken. Um, again, these are the most important people in your life. And we understand that. We also know they're kids and, and kids make mistakes. Sometimes kids find themselves in situations that it wasn't their fault. Um, but I would be honest, transparent, and then be able to talk about um, because you're probably, I would imagine you'll get a phone call at some point, be able to talk about how you've dealt with that situation and how your child has grown in that situation. Um, but it's, it's definitely not something that we're pumped to see, but we, we, we deal with it on a, on a case by case basis. Now you guys could jump in too, if you want it, Patrick or Ken, if, you, if there's something else, I, if, if I left something out. I thought you did a fine job, Sean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that. Sure. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree um, with everything you said. I think, um, you know, the boarding school process, you know, differs in a lot of ways from the college process. Um, I, I find the boarding school process to be much more transparent mm -hmm. um, than the college process. I, I feel like, um, you know, between parents and students and schools that it is, like you said, it is a strong partnership um, and we have to have that trust and honesty. And at the end of the day, you know, all of us that are supporting that student want to, um, we have their best interest at heart and we can only, you know, provide the support and guidance they need if we know the full story. Um, and so to really, you know, like you said, you know, be honest and open. Um, and I think another, another thing that I say is don't, you don't have to harp so much on what you, the nitty gritty of what you did wrong. You can, you can address it, but really the most important thing is to be able to reflect on what you learned from it and how you would change it going forward. Um, I mean, that's really an important piece of this is what did you learn from it and how did it impact your actions presently and in the future? Um, so, you know, as you said, you know, kids, we all, you know, make mistakes. And so um, it's really more about how you react to it um, that, that I think is an important piece to that, that answer. Um, so the next question, which is pretty self-explanatory, um, is there anything specific about the sequence of your child's schooling that you'd like to share? For example, skipping or repeating a year. Um, you know, if you answer yes to that, you can share, you know, the details of that. Um, and then um, the last optional one that I thought, Sean, you could address is how have COVID-19 and re remote learning impacted your child personally and or academically? Um, please use this, this space to describe what you and your child have learned through your positive and or negative experiences with this challenge. So do you, is that a question that you suggest everyone answer or only answer if they have something specific and how, what things would you like for them to include? Yeah, great point. I, next year, all right, I'll probably, be, hopefully I'll be tired of seeing that question, right? And seeing what the answers are. But I do think, and I'm sure my colleagues agree, when we talk about grit and resilience and even in some of the interviews that I've had with students in the fall, I, I asked the specific question. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for parents because I know we, as a parent, I've had to learn a lot about how I interact with my own child. And I, I, so there's been some, some ups and downs. There's been, uh, I appreciate teachers a lot more than I ever had. And again, I work at a boarding school, right? So it's, it's also great to hear from you, like what have you truly learned in this experience and why, and, and why you're looking at boarding school now, right? And, and, because I think they all kind of go together, right? In, in, in terms of why you're making that decision. 
especially during this this time. So I'm excited about uh, reading these prompts. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna feel the same way, uh, you, you know, in, in mid February, but but to the point that we've all made. Think about a, a conversation, a moment, uh, something significant that you can extract to 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 be in fact impactful in that conversation, right? I, in, in that in that prompt, I think all of our committees are, are going to be uh, going to hear a lot about COVID-19, but, but I, I'm sure a personal experience that has meant something to you, whether it's academically or socially, is going to be the thing that stands out in the process. Thank you. Um, so that leads me to another thought. So um, with many school boarding schools um, doing uh, or going test optional this year. How does that impact how y'all view essays? Yeah, I'll be honest, we haven't gotten there yet, right? Uh, you know, I, I think we start having preliminary conversations and looking at our rubric and things of that nature in, you know, in, in the first week of November. Um, so I don't have an answer. I try to be as transparent as possible. But I have to think that we're going to pay more attention than we ever had, um, which sounds terrible. That means that kind of insinuates that we didn't pay attention to essays. But I think we're, in terms of telling your story, right, I, I mean, and, and consistency and the recommendations in, in, in terms of that cohesion, I would say that essays are going to play a bigger part than they ever had, uh, they ever have in, in this process. But in terms of how exactly we're going to do it, uh, I, I don't have the answer to that. Um, but I know that's something that we'll be talking about over the next week or so. So I'd like to interject if I might. Uh, so to add to what Sean had mentioned, uh, I do also want to perhaps put things in context. I, I do completely agree. The essays are going to be pretty important this year. We do have a little bit of insight because uh, through uh, towards the end of yield season, we were evaluating students from abroad that were affected by the pandemic that could not complete that particular requirement. So we kind of had a beta test in the spring and we saw what that was like. Um, and really, uh, it, we did not have any issue. I didn't feel like we had um, a drop in the quality of students. I felt like the students that came through without test scores because they were unable to provide them for evaluation they were still great students and we were still able to figure out uh, if we could serve their needs in, in terms of that fit equation. Uh, but the other piece that I think is important to acknowledge with the SSAT or any other standardized test is um, it's only a moment in time, <laughs> a reflection of a student's performance on a particular set of questions on a particular date and a particular moment of time. So maybe they were dealing with allergies or maybe there was something heavy that was affecting their, their focus. And uh, you, know, you can take the exam multiple times and that presumably addresses that and mitigates uh, for the one moment in time scenario. But we understand that's not really reflective of how dynamic a kid can be once you catch them in person and you see them evolve through the four years of whatever the educational experience is amongst us three and all the other options that are out there. Um, so it's always had a role in our evaluation process. It's um, been a thing in the college world now for some time to go test optional. And when you look at the research there, um, it essentially says that you do not enroll a lesser quality class by going test optional. And that's because through the evaluation process uh, where you're looking at transcripts, there's an interview, there are recommendations, there are numerous ways to gain that perspective for a full, well-rounded picture of a student. And uh, that's on us. The onus is on us as admissions people to do that. So yes, we want you to share as much as you can, honestly, through your application. But if we're doing our job right, we're going to know who your student is. We're going to know uh, who you are as a parent or guardian, and we'll have a good sense of whether or not this is going to be a partnership that will work uh, for the next four years and will serve your student to the utmost. So that's my uh, response to that question. Thank you, Ken. Um, so that 
brings up another question that I want to ask y'all. Um, you know, for the most part, we are dealing with, you know, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16 year olds working on these essays. How obvious is it <laughs> to y'all when it maybe hasn't been written by a 13, 14, 15 or 16 year old? Um, and how does that impact how you view that application? I'll, I'll jump in. Um, it, it's quite obvious. I, I, I know we've all seen it. I, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there for mom and dad to hear and, and for son or daughter. Um, it, it really is. And, and especially if you submit a, you know, um, you know, a piece of work that you've done in English or um, if there's not like a congruency amongst the other essays and you could say, oh, someone else wrote this one, it, it comes across, it really does. And you used a word that I don't even know what it means. You know, that, that's always a tough one where like, I'm looking for the dictionary at the source, but um, we want to get across, uh, we, we want to get across from those essays who you are. Um, you know, so if, if, if that's where your writing is right now, that's fine. Like that we, that's a lot of great material for us. Um, and almost to, to Ken's point, you know, with, with the standardized testing, you know, there's been students who scored well above our average in the, in the 90th percentiles that just wasn't a good fit for us. And his academics were so high, but the, the personality fit wasn't there. And, you know, we've had, we've taken boys who've been well below our, our SSAT average, um, and they've been stellar students and, and leaders on our campus. So um, once again, don't, don't get too caught up in the most perfectly written college ready essay you're in eighth grade you're not college ready we understand that we can pretty much pick that up throughout throughout this interview process and and you know we're going to interview you and we're going to see where your grades are we're going to see those teacher comments so we're going to get a really good idea of you know syntax and grammar and, and where you are at so um you're not stumping the schwab we, we read too many essays to kind of know what's coming our way and, and when there's something a little off so please please be genuine it really is quite obvious and um, it usually creates a couple of chuckles in the office because we're like, oh, I don't know if Johnny did this one. So um, be aware, we're aware. Anyone else have anything to add to that? I'll just say that one of our core values is integrity. And uh, well, if you're not doing your own work, then perhaps it might not be a good fit value wise. So I just want to put that out there <laughs> as follow up to Patrick. Sean, do you have anything to add? No, I, I mean, I think that was very well put, you know, and consistency is key in all of this, right? We wanna, we're trying to help you be the best student you can be. And the only way for us to do that is to have a clear picture of who you are, uh, you know, when, when you're writing these essays. And it's, it's actually not fun when, when, when you see those things. Uh, it takes away from all the work that we have to do. And I think most importantly, we would agree, we've been forced or we are forced now to look at our processes in ways that we've never had before. And it's exciting. It's an exciting time for all of us. And so I know that, and that's for every boarding school. There's not, we're not doing things the same way that we've done it in the past. So I think that's good for, for prospective students. Thank you. Um, so, you know, the, the, the essays that we talked about and the statements that we talked about are, um, more general essay questions that are on the standard application online. So for some schools, they do have school specific essays. Um, so Patrick, for those schools that are asking, that are, are requiring kids to fill out school specific um, essays, how would you suggest that students go about completing those? Um, I would say do your homework, um, go to the website, do some research. Um, I I can't tell you how many times, you know, something comes up where it's like, did they even look at our school? Do they, do they know anything about it? And um, do your homework, do, go to the website, go to social media, get a sense of what their students are like. Um, you know, even talk about a program that they might have that they've highlighted that, it, you know, something that you enjoy as well. Um, that, that's my biggest, my biggest push. We, it it kind of hurts as uh, Sean had mentioned, if, once we read it and it's like, oh, they don't even know who we are. Um, so do your homework. Um, it, it, it really is pretty evident in the essays if, if you know the school or not, or if you have a, um, a good idea of what, what we're all about. 
Um, I think that's great advice. I, I often say to kids, you know, you want it, it, you want it to be specific to that school. You don't want to be able to remove the name of a school and insert another name of a school and have it read true. Um, you know, so, you know, saying that you love cold weather and fall leaves and, you know, the ability to ski on the weekends might not be, you know, the best thing. What they're really looking for is to know, like you said, that you've done your research, that you've dug deeper, that it's, you know, and there's an academic program that really speaks to you, or maybe it is skiing on the, and skiing on the weekends, you know, um, and that they have a, a, a ski club that goes skiing every Sunday. And maybe it's, you know, their art program or, um, you know, a different sport that they haven't had the opportunity to play, but to really kind of dig in to um, what each school specifically has. Um, I think from an, if I was an admissions on your side of the desk, that would be important to me to know that, that the kids and the parents had really done their homework and that they knew my school and that they could see how we fit together. Um, so I think that, that the doing the homework is, is a very important piece. Um, do any of you, Sean or Ken, have anything further to share on that? No. Um, we did have one question come through that I wanted. We had a couple of questions come through, but I think we addressed them. But one of them, um, and I don't know if, if one of you wants to speak to this specifically, but um, the question was asked that if a school offers multiple application platforms, like you know, maybe they do gateway and SAO, or maybe they do SAO and school specific. How should a family go about choosing which one? And is there a preference on y'all's side for what they choose? Do any of y'all uh, uh, allow for more than one? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're SAO and gateway, I, I think, and it's going to, it's going to vary from different schools. It can vary on your the platform that you're using at your particular school, to be honest, but I think what we all want is to be accessible as much as we can uh, to prospective students. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about that too much. Figure out the one that's best suited for you. Uh, and you know, I like to say this all the time: and control what you can control, right? Don't get caught up in the things that you can't control. And both students and parents have some fun with this. Uh, it's the biggest decision that you're going to be making right now. And I, everybody talks about the, the time and how tough it is. Yes, we know that, but how much fun are you having, right? How much are you enjoying embarking on this journey together as a family? Because, you know, as I listen to my colleagues talk, these schools mean a lot to us and we just want your, your child to be successful. And so try not to uh, put undue pressure on yourself that um, isn't necessary. And I know it's easy for me to say or easy for us to say, but you're applying to boarding schools Take advantage of it, learn about the schools, have some fun, control what you can control. And, you know, hopefully uh, the schools make the decision that works for you, um, you, you know, during the process. So I guess, I mean, I just want to clarify. So especially since you're a school that is Gateway and SAO, where SAO has more, um, I don't want to call them generic, but generic essay questions and Gateway tends to be more school specific. Do you prefer the more school school specific because that gives the students the opportunity to speak directly about your school versus a generic essay? No, I just, I, I don't look at, we don't look at it from that perspective. We just look at the application and, and look at that particular student and focus on that particular student. Okay. And Ken, do you use Gateway and SAO as well? No. Your well essay. Foxcroft has its own app and okay. really answer to that is uh, that we have no preference. Go with whatever is best for you. And uh, as Sean would say, control what you can control. I think that's great advice for 2020. That pretty much sums up <laughs> 2020. Um, I think for most people, there's a lot that we can't control. So we got to control what we can and let the rest go. Um, and I think that was great advice, Sean, too, that this is, this is such a amazing opportunity for these kids, even whatever they decide, you know, some of them may decide that they want to stay at their home school or they don't want to go to boarding school this next year, but just to have the opportunity to, you know, dig and explore and consider the possibilities, I think is such a gift. Um, and to see, you know, to see, see what else is out there um, and to have fun with it. Um, I, you know, I, 
I think in my next life, I say that I'd like to spend each year of my life at a different boarding school. <laughs> um, so maybe someday I'll join you on that side of the desk, but um, there are just such amazing opportunities. Um, the communities are incredible and, um, you know, and I, the growth that I see in my students who boarding school is the right fit for, I acknowledge it's not the right fit for everyone, but for those students and their families that it is the right fit for, um, it's a pretty incredible um, experience. Um, so um, thank you for doing what y'all do. I know that it is a 24 seven, 365 job. And so um, I, I so appreciate the effort that you put in, you know, to your schools and to your school community and to your students. Um, because I know it's, I know, I know it's a, a full time job, more than full time. Um, so we are coming to the end of our time. So just, if, is there anything else that you guys wanted to add in? Are you? I just oh, want to. Yeah. Uh, if anybody wants to check us out in person, we are offering in person tours. Uh, I'm not sure if that's available up in Connecticut, but it's definitely recommended as you're exploring institutions to assess fit. Um, and so see if your preferred schools are offering tours. If Foxcroft happens to be on your list, please contact me, ken.lebate at admission, or at Foxcroft, sorry, Ken Lebate, ken.lebate at foxcroft.org. It is me. Thank you. Um, are Patrick or Sean, are y'all doing in-person visits right now? Right now, we're not. We're, we're actually opening up the campus on November 21st. Uh, so between November 21st and about January 10th, we are allowing visits at that time. So, um, you know, I think all of us have upped our social media game and our website. So go check out the website, see what's going on there. We've created a few different videos that tell us if they're good or bad. Uh, but I think you'll get a pretty good sense for who we are and what, what our students are about and the community sense. So um, it's kind of what we talked about all night. Do your homework. You know, the one thing I want to leave you with, we, we threw a lot at you tonight, soak it in, but don't make this too much. Like don't get anxiety over this. This is a fun process as Sean was saying. It's I think a, a really great process for a family. You kind of get to know your son or daughter a little bit better throughout this process. Um, but biggest advice I can give you is just break this up over a few different weekends. Don't feel like you have to do it all in one, one full swoop. Um, and then just make sure schoolwork comes first. Don't let your grades suffer for this application. You know, we want to see that you're doing well in school and that's where your main focus should be. Uh, but it's a fun process. Um, explore, get a lot of different schools on your list um, and kick the tires, you know, ask questions. Um, this is your process, own it. Yeah, I would say, you know, and I don't know, it seems that we have a good amount of people on the call, but. If you do have access to a consultant or your secondary school placement person, somebody that you really can trust, I think this is a great time to, to develop those relationships because they know our schools really well. Uh, Katie knows our schools really well. So if you have the opportunity to, to work with someone, I think it just helps you tell your story. Um, and obviously that's different for everybody, but I think if you do, you should take advantage of it because those, we'll have deeper conversations, I think, as we, as we get closer to decision time and uh, you know, th that's really it. I, 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 you, there's so much to learn about yourself. And I think that our schools are learning too. So know that we are, we are trying to be our best selves as well. Um, and, and, and it's a new time, but it's an exciting, exciting time for all schools at the same time. So wish you the best of luck. Oh, I didn't, oh, we are um, Tuesday and Thursdays uh, started. We started in mid October. We have visits uh, four families per day. It's pretty booked up now and we haven't made a decision um, in that November to January time, but um, I would imagine that we that we will, but there's nothing definitive. So uh, visit those websites for now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much for joining us um, tonight on the panel um, and for the participants, thank you for joining us on the webinar. Um, we hope that you will join us for the upcoming um, webinars, which will be not next Tuesday, but the following two Tuesdays at seven. Um, Eastern time uh, on the 10th, we will have ref reflections from boarding school alumni. So we have a panel of students who have um, either are seniors at boarding school or have graduated or at boarding school or have graduated from boarding school to sort of talk about how their boarding school experience shaped um, who they are. 
um, and, and, and their college experience. And then November 17th at seven, we will have one on athletic recruiting. Um, and so a recording of tonight's webinar, along with the ones that we've done in the past and the ones in the future will all be um, housed on the boarding school 360 website, um, you know, for, for other people to access, um, you know, as they see fit, or if they decide they want to rewatch us because we were so entertaining, um, they can do that as well. Um, so we hope that everyone found it bene beneficial. Thank you guys so much for your expertise and your willingness to hang out with me on a Tuesday night. Um, at the, at the thick of your application season. So I really appreciate it. Um, and to those that are going through the boarding school process, we wish you the best of luck. So thank you. Thank you guys. Have a great night.